From Hollywood, the NBC Theater presents... Screen Director's Assignment, Production, Music for Millions, Director, Henry Coster, Star, June Allison... The Hollywood Screen Directors present the words and music of a human symphony, Music for Millions, starring June Allison in her original role and introducing the director of the film, Henry Coster. Tonight's guest screen director once said that Adolf Hitler handed him a motion picture education by chasing him in and out of virtually every studio in Europe. Along the way, he acquired the wealth of experience which he later brought to the American screen, along with the imaginative style of directing so well exemplified in such pictures as 100 Men and a Girl, It Started with Eve, The Bishop's Wife, and the soon-to-be-released films Happy Times and Come to the Stable. Ladies and gentlemen, the director of Music for Millions, Mr. Henry Coster. Thank you. Thank you. For two reasons, I'm most glad to be here. The first, well, it is always a thrill for a director to hear his picture translated into another medium, into radio. But the second, that is the important reason. You see, I'm a June Allison fan. For me... She is a new force in motion pictures, fresh, vital, spontaneous. But more than that, she is a highly talented actress. So now, with you, I settle back to enjoy June Allison's performance as Barbara Ainsworth in Music for Millions. We switch you now to Symphony Hall in Manhattan. The next voice you hear will be that of NBC's distinguished music commentator, Laverne Shelby. Go ahead, Laverne Shelby at Symphony Hall. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Laverne Shelby. In just a moment, we are going to hear this splendid orchestra in another of its popular Music for Millions programs. And the first selection is to be the always enchanting overture to Mozart's Marriage of Figaro. Because so many men are at war, our orchestra tonight is largely composed of women. There's Marie Oliphant, clarinet, Rosalind Dresser Oboe, Barbara Ainsworth, string bass... Ah, yes. Yes, I see Maestro Nikolai Stepna has just taken the rostrum to conduct the orchestra in Mozart's celebrated overture to Marriage of Figaro. Why, ladies and gentlemen, well, this is most unusual. Barbara Ainsworth, string bass, has stopped playing her enormous violin. She is running toward the wings. A little girl is running out to meet her. They're embracing on the stage. (laughs) Oh, yes, the audience loves it. They're applauding. And now Barbara and the little girl seem to be aware of their surroundings, and they're running off into the wings, hand in hand. I'll try to find out what that charming little drama was all about and tell you later. But uh, now back to our stage and to our music. Baby, oh, it's so wonderful to see you again. Gosh, I'm so excited. Golly, sis, I'm excited, too. I didn't mean to go out on the stage. Well, where on earth did you come from, Mike? Grand Central Station. Haven't you gotten fat, sis? Oh, no, dear. Why didn't someone say you were coming to New York? Aunt Kate wrote you a letter. Haven't you put on weight? I never got a letter. Your dress looks kind of tight to me. Look, Monkey, I've got to go out there and play, but you wait right here, and when the concert is over, we'll go to our apartment and ha- have a celebration with Rise and Marie. Hmm? That's very nice. May I eat more pickles than usual? Speak up. Who'll have more coffee? Corn beef? Raj? Not me, Barbara. I'm stuffed. You look very natural, though, Roz. (laughs) May I have more beans, please? I'm wide awake. Well, I'm not wide awake. Little Marie here has a date with the Sandman. (laughs) 
I'll bet even he stands me up. I'll join you, Marie, but first let's help Barbara and Mike put the folding bed down, huh? Oh, I can manage. You run off to bed. Oh, no, you don't, baby. Not in your interesting condition. Marie? I know. The dawn is breaking. Some joke. <laughs> really, Rise? I can handle the bed. Or Uncle Ferdinand can put it down for us when he comes in. Mm, assuming that he's a free man and reasonably sober. I'll cut it out, Ross. My Uncle Ferdinand is a very good little egg. A bit scrambled, you'll admit, Marie. Listen, my Uncle Ferdinand is nice people. Now, you just lay off the jet. All right, Marie. Let's go to bed, huh? Night, kids. Night. Good night. Don't be bitter, Marie, my girl. They'll be sending you to the troops to substitute for quinine. Mm-hmm. Good night. Gee, Marie and Ross... They're nice. They're wonderful. Babs, I'm worried about Joe. You're worried about Joe? He never sent me that Japanese sword he promised me. Oh. Well, Joe is very busy now. Everybody in the Army is busy these days. He's changed toward me since you married him, you know. <laughs> well, I'll get after him in my letter tomorrow. Do you write him every day? Every day. Does he write you every day? Goodness, no. Every week? No. Every month? Well, I I haven't heard from Joe in a long time. Don't worry, Babs. I've been praying for him. You have? To St. Christopher. Thank you, Mike. You look kind of tired to me. Well, standing up with that big fiddle for hours gets me down sometimes. We'd better get at these dishes and then get some sleep. Hello, girls. Well, hello, Uncle Ferdinand. Uh, just had a very rewarding chat with the police down at headquarters regarding my most recent rap. Uh, they say... Oh, well, who have we here? Uh, Uncle Ferdinand, this is my little sister, Mike, from Connecticut. Uh, Connecticut, eh? Yes, sir. She's going to spend the summer with us. I shall be ever grateful to that gallant state of Connecticut for the rousing stand her farmers made at Concord in 76. Uh, or was it Lexington in 58th? I believe Concord is in Massachusetts. And uh, what do you play, little one? Uh, the tuba? I whistle. Uh, I had a wonderful whistle once, but it withered for lack of proper moisture. <laughs> A whistle to retain its beauty and roundness must be oiled and... Uh, good night, lady. A fun good night. Good night, Uncle Ferdinand. He's kind of mixed up. <laughs> He's very tired, dear. We all love him very much. I like him, too. Well, now suppose we gather up these dishes and get going, hmm? Oh, you forgot to get him to put down the bed. Oh, I know, but... I can manage perfectly well. Babs! Marie! Russell and Babs faded! Something's the matter with Babs! Is she all right, Doctor? Is my sister all right? Why, there's nothing really the matter with your sister. She fainted, didn't she? Can you keep a secret? I'll try. Well, you're going to be an aunt. Me? Your big sister is going to have a baby. A baby? You won't tell anyone. Not even Babs? Uh, but no one else. Is it going to be a boy or a girl? Why don't we just wait and see? <laughs> well, you can go into her now. I'll talk to the other two ladies. They're in the kitchen being upset. Thank you. <laughs> Barbara. Come in, monkey, and don't look so serious. Babs? I'm perfectly all right. Do you feel strong enough to keep a secret? What size secret? You're going to have a baby. No. <laughs> I thought you ought to know. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you for telling me. I'm pretty excited, aren't you? Oh, yes, very excited and very happy. Tell me, Mike. Is it going to be a boy or a girl? Why don't we just wait and see?
Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, but this is Laverne Shelby breaking in. There are some remarkable shenanigans occurring on stage. Just now, the same little girl who almost broke up last week's concert walked out on the stage and placed a high stool on the platform for Barbara Ainsworth, the bass violin player, to sit on. <laughs> well, if that's to be the little girl's job, she has her work cut out for her in the next two months because tonight the orchestra leaves on a tour of army camps in the East. Now I'll return you to the stage of Symphony Hall in the Greek Piano Concerto, Konstantin Prokof at the keyboard. Are you decent? Come in. Come in, Marie. Well, what's the matter, Marie? Did we lose the war? Roz, I uh, just got a telegram. Oh. Anything wrong? It isn't for me. It's for Barbara. But with her Joe overseas and all, I took the telegram, said I was Mrs. Joe Ainsworth. Oh, is it Joe? The War Department regrets. Oh, no. We can't let her know, Roz. Not until after she's had the baby. Oh, and we were going to go out tonight and celebrate at Florio's before hitting the road. Can't let on to Barbara that anything's wrong. Oh, what a rotten shame. <laughs> Hurry up, Marie. Florio's. <laughs> Florio, more spaghetti and meatballs. I would like some more ice cream, please. Spumoni for the bambino. Egad, but I'm a character. Claire de Lune. Who oh, asked him to play Claire de Lune? Oh, it's all right, Roz. Florio knows it was Joe's favorite tune when we came here before the war. Claire de Lune. Moonlight. I wonder, is he thinking of moonlight? Moonlight on a hundred beaches scarred with wreckage. Moonlight on steel, on broken island paradises, on white crosses, far from home. Oh, Joe, Joe, wherever you are, can you hear Claire de Lune? Moonlight, wherever you are, Joe, wherever you are. birth with you? Oh, yes, monkey. <sighs> You're crying. No, I have a cold. You're crying. There hasn't been a letter from Joe in months. Maybe there will be one next week. Oh, there won't be a letter next week or ever. Joe's never going to see his baby. Oh, Babs, if you just pray, if you just pray hard, Joe will come back. He's sure to. I used to know the Psalms almost by heart, but I haven't prayed ever since I was a little girl. It's not what you know, it's who you know. I talk to St. Christopher, and he passes it along. You're such a wise little person, Mike. I know. And don't forget to say please. No, I won't forget. Thank you, God. Now go to sleep, huh? I said, please. That's fine. Good night, monkey. Good night, Joe. listening to the Hollywood Screen Director's presentation of Music for Millions, starring June Allison and introducing the director of the film, Henry Coster. This is Laverne Shelby, NBC music commentator on tour with the Manhattan Philharmonic. Now, it may be true that many of the soldiers hearing this great orchestra on tour are whistling at the girl musicians. 
But a lot more of them are whistling great music that they never thought they liked before. What a tour. Men, men, men. I wish they wouldn't always play that at bedtime. Yeah, always do. Well, good night, Barbara. Good night, Marie. Mike, Mike, go over to Marie's bed and see if, she, if, see if you can find some tissues in her handbag. She always has some. All right, Babs. She and her Silas. <laughs> Silas, dear. Don't wake her up. I won't. Have you got the bag? I have it. Oh! Who was that? Paul, I'll shoot or something. Don't you... shoot, don't shoot. Mike! Hey, what's the idea of nosing around in my handbag? I just asked her to find some cleansing tissues for me. Well, I like my privacy, and that goes for Mike or you or anyone else in this orchestra. Well, all right. I'm sorry. Gee, she didn't have to skin me alive. It's all right, honey. It won't happen again, Marie. Oh, forget it. I didn't break anything or read old Telegram. Gee whiz. Telegram? How could I anyhow? It's so dark. Telegram? Oh, gee, Marie, I'll be glad when this tour's over. Let's go to the club, Paul. Uh, no, wait, Roz. I, I've been wanting to talk to you. Well, what's the matter? Mike blundered on that telegram from the war department last night. I lost my head, and well, I have a hunch Barbara knows what the wire's all about. Well, how would she suspect? Well, why should I blow my top over a little thing like the kids looking through my bag for some tissues? Yeah. She knows I had something on my conscience. But she mustn't know that Joe is dead until after the baby comes. I'll buy that. Yeah, but what'll we do? Is your Uncle Ferdinand going to meet you at Grand Central tomorrow? Mm. If he's not in the clink, why? Well, where could we see him? In private. Well, he has an office, which some coarse people call a saloon. Tables for ladies? Mm, I reckon. I'll send him a telegram. Tell him to meet us there tomorrow. We can use his talents. I hope. Uncle Ferdinand, we made this appointment with you because, well, we've got work for you. Uh, work? Mm -hmm. uh, excuse me, girl. Sit down, Uncle. This is right up your alley. I deplore the implication that I frequent alleys, even if I do. I want you to study the handwriting in this letter. Letter? I took it out of a box of letters Barbara saves from Joe. What for? What for? We want you to forge a letter from Joe to Barbara so she'll think he's alive. Uh, isn't he? No, Uncle. He isn't. Can do. American know-how is winning this war, ain't it? Oh, Uncle, I love you dearly. I uh, will have to work on it carefully and in solitude. It must be the mail. See? Didn't I tell you my uncle was the most painstaking forger at large? It will have the tang of the deep Pacific on it. It'll even be censored. <laughs> Whatever on earth. A letter, B mail. Oh, give it to me. It's from Joe. Oh, Open yes, it. Yes, yes. 
Oh. Hey, what's all the shouting for? What's up? The mail. Uh, Joe? Marie, Roz, listen. Yeah. Joe was lost on an island for four months. He had to parachute from a plane, but he's safe and sound and, and so happy. Listen, I'm fine now. I, I lost a few pounds and had coconut poisoning, I think, but I'm in the pink now. I'm all brown from the sun and hard as nails. I've got an idea I'm even getting handsome. Gee, he sounds so gay. Doesn't he sound gay? Yeah. He was never like that, was he? Well, he used to be so quiet and serious. I knew it'd be all right. Oh, Mike. You were right, weren't you, about saying please? That reminds me. I've got to thank somebody for something. I'll go with you, Mike. Oh, excuse us, girls. We'll see you in church. Well, it worked. We had to do it, Ross. Poor little Mike and her St. Christopher. Mike. Hmm? Monkey. Yes, perhaps. Please find Ross and Marie, will you? Tell them I'd like to go to the hospital now. Hello? Oh, yes, Ros. How is she now? Uh, is Ros calling from the hospital? A boy? Oh, no kidding. Uh, what else but kidding? I'll be right over, Ros. Bye. Uh, I'll go over to the hall and watch rehearsal. No, you won't. You're coming to the hospital with me. Uh, I might need you for something. Hello, Barbara kid. Hi, Marie. Uncle Ferdinand. Uh, hello, Isn't girl. Isn't she fine? Did the nurse tell you about Joe? Joe? Uh, no, what? I mean, the baby, Joe. Oh. I'm going to name him Joe, Junior. Unique. Oh, I'm so happy and calm, at peace. Oh, I'm glad. When I knew I had little Joe, Joe Junior, I knew that even if Joe had really died, it, oh, it would have hurt, yes, but I'd know someone had planned it that way. Someone wise and kindly, beyond our understanding... And I'd be content with the image of Joe. Oh, but now I have both of them. Do, do you still feel that way? I mean, about Joe not coming back? Oh, I would feel that way. But I don't have to now. Joe is safe. His letter said so. Barbara, I have a confession to make for us. Confession? Barbara, now, this has got to be fast and blunt or I'll never say it. Joe didn't write that letter you got. Joe... Joe didn't write? Uh, uh, Uncle Ferdinand wrote it. Uncle Ferdinand? Uh, what? Well, I'm telling her that you wrote that letter from Joe. But that's absurd. Uh, what letter? The letter Roz and I got you to forge, Joe to Babs. Oh, now I remember. Yeah, I thought you yeah. would. What is this? Uh, I remember that I clean forgot to write that letter. You, you didn't write that letter? Uh, I'm awful sorry, Marie. Sorry? Sorry? Well, Barbara, Joe is alive. Of course he is. That, that, that letter really was from Joe. Yes, I know. Well, excuse me, gentle people. i got to go out and make a telephone call. Oh, hallelujah. And I'm not kidding. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back in Symphony Hall again. And we're waiting for conductor Nikolai Stepna to take the podium. And, um, oh, I see there's a last-minute change in the program tonight. The opening selection has been changed to the Hallelujah Chorus from Handel's Messiah. Hmm. Oh, here comes Mr. Stepna. A mimeograph footnote on the program informs me that the change was requested by two very important people. Uh, two guys named Joe, it says here. That's curious. The Hallelujah Chorus from the Messiah. Two guys named Joe. Hmm. A 
hope the radio won't disturb anybody in the hospital. You like it, Barbara? Oh, it's beautiful. I gotta thank somebody for something. I'll go with you, Mike. Well, have fun, Mother. Come on, monkey. I've got to thank somebody for something. Blessed be the Lord who raiseth the poor out of the dust and maketh the woman to dwell in her house a joyful mother of children. He has heard the voice of my supplications. In him my heart hath trusted, and I am helped. Oh, blessed, blessed be the Lord our God, and let the people say, Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next week on Easter Sunday, the NBC Theater proudly presents one of the most widely acclaimed dramas of our time, the Academy Award-winning motion picture, The Best Years of Our Lives, and our star will be Dana Andrews. And now, before our guests return, the National Broadcasting Company extends congratulations to station WHO in Des Moines, today celebrating its silver anniversary in radio. Now, here again are June Allison and screen director Henry Coster. Henry, how does it feel to be a motion picture man of the world? A motion picture man of the world? That sounds like somebody who wears striped pants to a Saturday matinee. (laughs) I mean that you've directed pictures in Berlin and Vienna, Paris, Budapest, and Amsterdam, and now you're directing them in Hollywood. I tell you, June, at first it was very confusing. In six languages, I had to learn how to say, no, it isn't right. Do it again. (laughs) Is that all? Do it again. What else does a director have to say? (laughs) Oh, Henry, you're not fooling anybody. Everyone knows you're one of the greatest directors in Hollywood. And you're very sweet. Shh, June, don't say that. I'm a very tough guy. Okay, Mr. Tough Guy. But before we say goodnight, I want to say thanks, Henry. Thanks for sharing all that wonderful motion picture knowledge with us actors and actresses. And Henry... Yes, June? I still think you're sweet. And I think I'm going to kiss you. Hmm. (laughs) My, what a deep sigh That wasn't a sigh, June That's how you say do it again in any language (laughs) Good night, Henry Good night, everyone Good night And good night to you, June Allison and Henry Coster Music for Millions was presented by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer Producers of Take Me Out to the Ball Game, starring Frank Sinatra, Esther Williams, and Gene Kelly. June Allison can currently be seen in the Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer Technicolor production, Little Women, co-starring with Peter Lawford, Margaret O'Brien, and Elizabeth Taylor. Included in tonight's cast were Anne Whitfield, Gigi Pearson, Betty Moran, Herbert Rawlinson, Wilms Herbert, Joe Kearns, and Dan Ritz. Music for Millions was adapted for radio by Milton Geiger, and original music was composed and conducted by Henry Russell. Production was under the supervision of Howard Wiley, associate producer Ray Dietrich. Your announcer has been Frank Barton. Listen again next week when the NBC Theater presents... Screen Director's Assignment, Production, The Best Years of Our Lives, Director William Wyler, Star Dana Andrews... The NBC Theater came to you from Hollywood. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.